All right, who's ready for some reptiles? All right. Everybody give a warm welcome to John Storms and his world of reptiles! Thank you. Welcome to our program. My name is John Storms, and I'm going to introduce you to some of my friends. My friends are called reptiles. Now, before we start looking at all my creepy crawly little buddies, I want to say one quick thing. During the program, if you've got a question, don't raise your hand. Don't shout out the question. Wait till we're through looking at the animals. Then we've got a few minutes set aside for questions and answers. Now, are you ready to have some fun? Yeah! All right, me too! I thought we'd start off our program today and take a look at a snake. Now, this snake lives right here in the United States. He's kind of famous. You might have heard of him. This is called the King Snake. Now, the King Snake doesn't get his name of King because he's bigger than all the other snakes. No, there's lots of snakes out there bigger than he is. Boas, pythons, anacondas, they're way bigger than he is. In fact, they make him look like an itty bitty teeny tiny little guy. He's also not called the king because he's the smartest of all the snakes. Nope, this guy never even graduated from kindergarten. And look at him. He doesn't wear a crown. He doesn't live in a castle. He's not even married to a queen snake. No, he doesn't do all those things the other kings do. This guy gets his name of king because he eats other snakes. Now, he doesn't just eat snakes. He'll eat any kind of animal small enough for him to catch and kill and swallow. He eats rats and mice, frogs and lizards, birds and even birds' eggs. But his favorite thing to eat is snakes. Now he eats all kinds of snakes. He eats harmless snakes like garter snakes and ribbon snakes and black racer snakes. But this guy's famous because he kills and eats poisonous snakes, even rattlesnakes. Now, you're probably sitting out there saying, whoa, how does that guy kill and eat a rattlesnake? I'm going to tell you. First, he looks that rattlesnake right in the eyes. Then he strikes, grabs the rattlesnake's head in his mouth, holds the rattlesnake's mouth shut so that it cannot bite him. Then he wraps his body around the body of the rattlesnake and squeezes him so that he cannot breathe. After he's killed him in this way, he just swallows that old rattlesnake right down. Now you're probably sitting out there saying, that's great, that's wonderful. What a really good way to kill and eat a rattlesnake. But what if he misses? when he tries to grab the rattlesnake's head in his mouth. <gasps> what if the rattlesnake bites him and gives him poison? Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> what happens to the poor old king snake then? Usually nothing. It doesn't kill him. It doesn't even make him feel sick. And the reason why is none of the poisonous snakes that live in the United States can kill him with their poison. We have four groups of poisonous snakes in America. We have rattlesnakes, water moccasins, copperheads, and coral snakes. He gets bitten by any of those snakes, no problem. He gets bitten by a poisonous snake from some other part of the world, big problem. Yep, he goes on vacation over to India, gets in an argument with a cobra, cobra bites him and gives him poison. <laughs> He dies. Yep, he's only safe from the poison of the American poisonous snakes. Now, you're probably sitting out there saying, well, I understand that. What I'm a little bit confused about is, oh, why does he even bother to hold the rattlesnake's mouth shut? I mean, if the rattlesnake bites him and gives him poison, it's not going to kill him, is it? No. So why do the extra work? Why go to the extra effort? Why hold his mouth shut to begin with? Reason why is, Rattlesnakes don't just have poison. They also have really big, sharp teeth. 
called fangs. Now, a diamondback rattlesnake, just like the ones that live here in Florida where we live, a diamondback rattlesnake can have fangs almost an inch long, and they're sharper than a needle. Would you like to be chewed on with inch long needle sharp teeth? No way! Neither would he. That's why he holds that rattlesnake's mouth shut. Plus, can you imagine what would happen if he did miss? And if that rattlesnake started biting him over and 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 over Well, pretty soon this poor guy would be so punched full of holes, we'd have to change his name. We'd have to start calling him the Swiss Cheese Snake. And I think y'all agree, that would be silly. Now, the reason I say it looks weird is it looks just about like a great big fat hippopotamus sat down on top of him and smashed him flat as a pancake. This is called the Pancake Tortoise. Now, I think you'll agree with me. Pancake Tortoise is a pretty good name for this guy. He is flat as a pancake, and yes, he is a tortoise. Now, you probably know tortoises are part of the turtle family, aren't they? Yes. Now, what is the one thing every turtle has? A shell, exactly right. In fact, if you do not have a shell, you cannot be a turtle. It's a rule. Well, he's got a shell. So he's got a shell on his back, shell on his belly. He's a real turtle. Now, most turtles have a thick, hard, bony shell. And if an animal attacks a turtle, what's a turtle do? Hides in the shell, doesn't he? Pulls in his head, pulls in his legs, pulls in his little old tail. Hides in that hard, bony shell. Nasty old animal can chew on that hard shell all day long. Doesn't hurt the turtle inside. He's safe. But this guy's got a problem. He's got a soft shell. In fact, his shell is so soft, it goes in and out, 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 in and out. Every time he breathes. In fact, look at it, I can push on his belly. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Does this look like a good shell to hide from your enemies inside? No way. Somebody starts chewing on this guy, they chew him up and swallow him. So, he had to find a better way to protect himself. Now, remember I told you he lives in Africa, right? He actually lives in the hills and mountains of West Africa. And he's a vegetarian. Yeah, never ever ever eats meat. No hamburgers, no hot dogs, not even tacos or burritos. None of that good stuff. No, I don't know what's wrong with him. No, he mostly eats fruits and vegetables, plants and flowers, but do you know what his all-time favorite food is? Grass. Do you guys eat a lot of grass? No. Nah, me neither. He loves to eat grass. He's kind of like a little tiny flat cow. Well, Let's pretend one morning he's over walking along on a grassy hillside over in Africa having a delicious breakfast of grass. It's a nice day, but as the morning goes on, the sun gets higher and it gets hot. Just like here in Florida, you know, by the late in the morning, it's pretty hot down here too. Well, pretty soon he's burning up out on that hillside. He's over there going, oh man, if I don't cool off pretty soon, I'm going to melt. So he looks around, sees a big tree. 
I think all of us have cooled off in the shade of a tree. He goes over, gets in the shade of the tree. Now he's cooling off, feeling good. Life is wonderful again. Till he looks up into the tree and sees a leopard up there. Oh, no. Leopard looks down at him and goes, Oh, right. I'm having pancakes for breakfast today. My favorite. Leopard jumps down out of the tree to eat this guy for breakfast. Pancake tortoise immediately jumps up, turns around, runs as fast as he can, which isn't very fast. He's a turtle, you know. Anyway, he dashes along as quickly as possible. Then he jumps down into a little small hole in the ground. Once he's down in that hole in the ground, he takes the biggest, deepest breath he can. He goes like this. He goes, <gasps> and holds his breath. And when he does that, he blows up his soft shell just like you could blow up a balloon. So now, he's not a little flat pancake down in that hole. Now, he's a great big fat balloon turtle. And he's so fat, he's stuck inside the hole. Well, Leopard walks over, looks at the turtle in the hole, and he goes, yes, he's even bigger than I thought. He says, this is going to be a good breakfast. Leopard reaches down, grabs that turtle to pull him out and eat him up. He gives a little pull and <gasps> nothing happens. Turtle's so fat, he's stuck in the hole. Leopard can't pull him out. Leopard says, I just got to pull harder. So he reaches down again, pulls a little harder. Nothing happens again. Now the leopard gets mad. Says, wait a minute. I'm big. I'm bad. I'm tough. I'm a leopard. I'm not going to get beat by a turtle. So he grabs that turtle with both paws, pulls as hard as he can, and nothing happens. Turtle's blown up too big, stuck too tightly. Leopard can't get him out of that hole. Leopard sits down, looks at the turtle in the hole, and he goes, ha, turtle, I didn't want pancakes for breakfast today anyway. I'm going to McDonald's for an egg McMuffin. And he leaves. Well, this guy waits till the leopard's gone. Then he has a great big sneeze. He goes, oh, choo, and bang. He's back flat as a pancake again. Then he backs out of that hole and goes back to eating his delicious grassy breakfast. Now I think y'all agree, even though all turtles do have a shell, they don't all use their shell in the same way to escape from their enemies. Tell me, what kind of a snake this is? You haven't seen him yet. Any of you guys sitting next to a long, skinny guy with no legs? No? Okay. Just checking. Oh, there he is. What is he? Oh, I heard some good guesses. I heard somebody say, Coral Snake. That's a good guess, but wrong. I heard somebody say, Corn Snake. That's a good guess, but that's wrong too. I heard somebody say, King Snake. That's a really, really good guess but that's wrong too. I think I'm gonna to have to tell you, this is called, oh, I think I just heard the right answer. This is called a milk snake. Milk. Now, we don't usually think of milk and snakes as going together, do we? No. 
Do you think he gets his name a milk snake because he drinks a lot of milk? Let me tell you where that name comes from. He actually got this name a long time ago, back when our country was first being settled by people that came over from Europe. You know, places like England, France, Spain, places like that. They came over here to make a new life. Like the pilgrims. Y'all heard of the pilgrims, right? Yeah, they came over and invented Thanksgiving. Did really well with that. They're still getting royalties, yeah. Try and think of something like that, you'll be rich forever. Uh-huh. Well, when people like the pilgrims came over, most of them were farmers. And they didn't have big farms, they had little farms. Most of the farmers had like one, maybe two cows. Did not have big herds of cattle. But even though they had a little farm, one or two cows, they always built a barn. And the reason they built the barn, well, one of the reasons they built the barn was they had to put the cows in the barn at night. Because if they left the cows out in the field at night, the cows would be killed and eaten by bears or wolves or mountain lions. Well, farmers put them in the barn at night, come out in the morning, milk the cows, then put them out in the field for during the day. Did that for a while, and then guess what? They started finding these little snakes in the barn when they went out to milk the cows in the morning. Had no idea what they were. Had never seen them in England or France or Spain. Did not know what their name was. Finally, after a while, the farmer said, you know, we got to name these guys. We cannot keep calling them little snakes we find in the barn when we go out to milk the cows in the morning. It's too long! So, they sat down to name the snake. They sat there and they said, well, let's see. We got cows in the barn. They said, yeah, we do. We got little snakes in the barn. Yeah, we do. And they said, one of the farmers said, cows give milk. And they said, yeah, they do. And another farmer said, that's it! The little snakes are in the barn drinking milk out of the cows! Let's call them milk snakes. And that's what they did. Makes you wonder about those pilgrims, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Do you think there is a cow on this planet that would stand there and let a snake drink milk out of it? No. If this guy crawled in a barn, tried to drink milk out of a cow, that cow would jump up in the air, do a tap dance on top of his head, and you would not have a milk snake. You'd have a flat as a pancake snake. In fact, he'd be way flatter than the pancake tortoise we just looked at. So, this guy is not in the barn drinking milk out of the cows. Do you know why he is in the barn? He's in there because in addition to putting the cows in the barn, farmers stored the food he harvested in the barn. So if he's got a cornfield, corn in the barn. Apple orchard, apples in the barn. Orange grove, oranges in the barn. And at night, rats and, mess, rats and mice went into the barn to eat the food the farmer stored there. He went in to eat the rats and mice. So it really had nothing to do with cows or milk or anything like that. But he got the name Milk Snake and he still got it today. Now, the Milk Snake is one of the snakes that mimics or looks like or pretends to be a coral snake. There's two other snakes that mimic or look like the coral snake here in the United States. They're called the Scarlet Snake and Scarlet King Snake. Now there's two big differences between a real coral snake and these guys that mimic or pretend to be corals. First of all, a real coral snake always has poison, always has big sharp teeth called fangs, and if they bite you, you could die. The mimics, on the other hand, never have poison, never have fangs, and even if he bites you all day long, you're not going to die! Unless it just scares you to death! Second difference is very important. Both the coral snakes and the mimics have three different colored rings that go around their body. The rings are colored red, yellow, and black. Now, only a real coral snake has the red ring next to the yellow ring. All the mimics have black between the red and yellow. And that's easy to see on this guy. Let me get him straightened out here. See how we have red, black, yellow, black, red, black, yellow, black, red, black, yellow, black, red, black, yellow, black. We always have the black between the red and yellow on the mimics. Now, the best way to remember red next to yellow means a real coral snake. Think of a traffic light. What color is the light on top of a traffic light? You guys have said green. Hopefully you're not the drivers. <laughs> red! What color is the light right next to the red light? Yellow! yellow. What does the red light mean? Stop. Stop! What does the yellow light mean? 
slow down. Ooh, I saw some of the adults say, speed up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I thought it meant speed up too until the other day I was going through a little town you've all heard of. It's called Fort Meade. You know, in Fort Meade, when they say 41, or say, they say, say 40, they don't mean 41. <laughs> and when they have a yellow light, they mean slow down. They don't mean speed up. A kindly policeman explained that to me. So, remember, if you're in Fort Meade, yellow does mean slow down. All right, now, if you see a snake with a red ring next to a yellow ring, like the red light is next to the yellow light on a traffic signal, it means the same thing. It means stop, slow down, get away from me! I'm a coral snake, and they have a very dangerous poison. Now, if you see the black between the red and yellow, don't worry about it. Just one of the mimics, like the milk snake. Oh, the mimics, they do have a mouth. They do have teeth. They could bite you. But look at him. He's got a little tiny mouth. Itty bitty, teeny tiny teeth. Even if he does bite you, it doesn't hurt. So don't worry about the mimics. But if you see that red next to yellow, that's a real coral snake. You leave him alone. in the grasslands and savannas of North Central Africa. This is called... The Savanna Monitor Lizard! Now... The savanna monitor lizard lives in an area that is called savannas. Savannas are just huge, huge, huge fields of grass. Very few trees. Most of the time, no trees. So of course you know where he likes to make his home. Up in the top of a tree. Almost never finds one. But if he does, he's thrilled. Now. Most of the time he cannot find a tree and so what he ends up doing is digging a hole in the ground. That becomes his home and luckily he's a really good hole digger so this works out okay. Now the monitor family of lizards is a very large family. Lots of different kinds of monitors come in a wide variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Some are big! Have you ever heard of a water monitor? They can get to be almost 10 feet long. And they're not even the big guys. I'll bet you've heard of the big guys. The Komodo dragons. They can grow to be over 12 feet long and weigh close to 300 pounds. That makes them not just the largest monitor lizard in the world, but the largest lizard of any kind in the world. Now, this guy, he's not going to get to be quite as large as his two giant cousins. First, let me tell you something. He's a baby. He's only a year and a half old. He's got growing ahead of him still. But even when he's grown up, he's only going to get to be three or four feet long. But you know what? I think if you looked out your window into your backyard, saw a four foot long lizard running around out there, you'd be pretty impressed, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd also probably stay in the house. Well, this guy's going to get to be three or four feet, so hopefully he won't end up in your backyard. Uh huh. Now, the monitor lizards, there's lots of different kinds of them, but they have several things in common. First, they're all meat eaters. These guys never eat fruits or vegetables, plants or flowers, grass, none of that stuff. They only eat meat. Now, they'll eat any kind of meat, but their favorite kind of meat to eat is old, dead, rotten, stinky meat. You know the kind I mean. 
where that meat is covered with flies and maggots and worms and smells worse than a skunk. Now, how many of you have ever actually smelled a skunk? Yeah, would you like to smell another one? No. But this guy thinks really bad stinky smells are great. They make him hungry. That's right. Now they find this rotten, dead, stinky stuff to eat with their sense of smell. He's got a nose, just like you do. He can smell with his nose, just like you can. But he also has a long, forked tongue like a snake. Have you seen him sticking his tongue out? Yeah. Well, there it goes, there it goes. Like a snake, he can smell with his tongue. In fact, they actually smell better with their tongue than they do with their nose. Yep. Uh-huh. Now, the best tongue smellers are the Komodo dragons. They can smell a dead animal from over seven miles away using their tongue. That's pretty good. This guy, he can smell a dead animal from two or three miles away. That's still pretty good. Plus, they can smell dead animals buried underground. There's a dead animal buried under two or three feet of dirt. They'll smell it, dig it up, and eat it for lunch. So they're good at finding stinky stuff to eat. But not everything they eat has to smell bad. They also eat animals that they catch and kill. They're very good hunters. Now, they're good hunters because they have good weapons. First, look at his head. He's got a big mouth, strong jaws, sharp little teeth. When he bites, bites hard. Look at his feet. Got needle sharp claws. Uses those for scratching, cutting, and fighting. Then there's his tail. Got a long, strong, powerful tail. Uses that tail like a whip. He can hit an animal, hurt an animal, knock an animal down. These are rough, tough, dangerous animals. In fact, they're so rough, so tough, so dangerous, they don't have very many enemies out in the wild. In fact, his worst enemies are other monitor lizards. You see, monitor lizards hunt each other, they catch each other, they kill each other, and they eat each other. They're cannibals. But, other than monitors hunting monitors, it's really only one predator over in Africa. Rough enough, tough enough, nasty enough to hunt these guys. Can you guess who that predator is in Africa that hunts them? That is not a monitor himself. So I don't mean a Komodo dragon over there on vacation. No. Crocodile, great guess. Big killer in the river. Giant jaws, giant teeth. <gasps> no. What else is in Africa? Lion. Great guess. King of the beast. Big claws, big teeth. <gasps> no. A cheetah, the fast guy. No. Hyena. No, the hyenas just run around and laugh a lot. They go. <laughs> That's why they're called laughing hyenas. A what? A jaguar on vacation in Africa. Because they live in South America. No. A turtle. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I hear somebody say a bunny rabbit? No. Not even a bunny rabbit with a machine gun. Oh, I'm gonna have to tell ya. It's people. That's right. I know some of you are sitting out there saying, we're not animals. Actually, there's three things on this planet that are alive. Plants, animals, and viruses. You're too big to be a virus. You're not green enough to be a plant. That kind of leaves animals. Now. The good part is, we're on top of the animal kingdom. You know why? Because we make the list. Yeah. <laughs> if elephants were in charge, we'd be way down there. Yeah, they'd be on top. Okay? So anyway, there are 
Okay, lots of, let me get that, there we go, now he's all cleaned up. Okay, now people hunt literally anything that can be hunted. They hunt monitors for three reasons. First, some people hunt them so they can catch them and put them in a zoo. Then you can look at them and study them and learn about them. Other people hunt them so they can catch them and kill them and sell their skins to be made into shoes and boots and purses and belts. Third reason people hunt them is to catch them and kill them and eat them as food. Oh, how would you like to find out for dinner tonight? Good old mom and dad, we're gonna fire up the grill. Put some baked potatoes on there to roast, roast some corn out there, and cook up some monitor McNuggets! Mmm, doesn't that sound tasty? Central America. This is called the bow. Now, we haven't gotten to the big stuff yet. The boa constrictor's name tells you he is a constrictor. And constrictors are the strong guys in the snake family. These are the snakes that grab onto an animal, wrap their body around it, squeeze it so that it cannot breathe. Even a little constrictor is very, very strong. Now, even though these are really strong, powerful animals, they don't rush the animals they're trying to kill and eat as their food. No, nope. they squeeze the animal just tightly enough so that it can no longer breathe in. All it can do is breathe out. You know what, you can't just breathe out for very long. Gotta have that breathing in to go with it, otherwise you're in big trouble pretty fast. As a result, most of the animals they kill and eat as their food are dead or unconscious and well under a minute. Now, I get asked a lot of questions about boa constrictors. And, we're going to talk about a couple of those questions today. One question I get asked is, do boas bite? Or even can boas bite? You think they can bite? Yeah, yeah well, let's talk about it. First of all, listen. You have a mouth, right? Your dog has a mouth, your cat has a mouth. Even your pet goldfish has a mouth. I have a mouth. The boa has a mouth. If you've got a mouth, yes, you can bite. But it doesn't mean you will bite or you have to bite. I mean, you guys don't go around biting each other all the time, do you? No. And do your parents chew on you a lot? No. Now, let me ask you a question. You guys all go to the library and check out books, don't you? Yes, the correct answer is yes. I go every week and I check out lots of books. That's great. Have you ever gone to the library, checked out a book, and gotten bitten by the librarian? No. So you see, 
If you've got a mouth, yes, you can bite, but it doesn't mean you will bite or you have to bite. Boas normally bite if they're scared or startled or surprised or if something's attacking them. Rest of the time, pretty much don't bite any more than you do. Now, another question I get asked, do boas have teeth? Yes, all snakes have teeth. Lots of teeth. They can have up to 300 teeth in their mouth. And every tooth is sharper than a needle. Third question I get asked, do boas have poison or fangs? No. No poison, no fangs. But remember I told you they do have teeth. Little snakes have little teeth. Big snakes have big teeth. Some of the boas get to be pretty big snakes. Now, if you get bitten by a big old boa with his big sharp teeth, does it hurt? Yes. Does it cut you up? Yes. Are you going to bleed a lot? Yes. Are you going to die? No. You going to want to die? Maybe. It really hurts when they bite. So, if you ever have a pet boa, don't scare him or startle him or surprise him or think you're going to hurt him or, you know, make him think you're going to hurt him or, you know, attack him. Because if you do that stuff, he is going to bite. And if he bites, you're not going to like it. So don't do that. you? No. Now, we have the crocodiles and alligators living here in Florida. Don't have very many crocodiles. Do have a lot of alligators. If you wanted to find a wild crocodile or alligator in Florida, you'd probably go look for them around the water. We have a lot of water in this state. We're very wet. We have rivers, lakes, ponds, canals, swamps, the Everglades, and guess what? Even Florida's in the water. Yeah, we're a peninsula. We have the Atlantic Ocean to the east, Gulf of Mexico to the west, Caribbean Sea to the south. So we've got water all over inside and outside of Florida. Now, Crocodiles and alligators spend a lot of their time in the water. Crocodiles prefer saltier water. They're mostly down around the Florida Keys. Alligators prefer fresher water. They're in the rivers, lakes, ponds, canals, swamps, and the Everglades. They're both in and under the water most of the time, so they've developed special adaptations that help them live in and under the water. We're going to look at a couple of those today. First. Can you see the top of his head? Can you see how his eyeballs are up on top of his head? His nose is up on top of the end of his mouth. That makes it so he can sit just like this in the water with his whole body hidden below the surface and only his eyeballs and the tip of his nose are on top of the water. That way he can look around 
watch all the animals moving around him, but they can't see where he is. He stays hidden and safe. Sounds like a pretty good way to hide and survive out there in the water. But what if he's sitting out there one day, watching a big duck swimming around, saying to himself, I'm going to eat a duck for lunch, when all of a sudden, a great big log floats up behind him and bonks him on top of the head. Oh man, it's where his eyeballs are sticking up. Oh, sounds like smashed eyeballs to me. Do you know what he does whenever anything gets close to his eyeballs? He goes just like this, watch this. He goes, bonk, bonk. He pulls his eyeballs right inside his head. That's right. What minute they're sticking out on top looking around? Hey, there's a duck. Hey, there's a frog. Oh, no, it's a great big log. Bonk, bonk. Pulls his eyeballs inside his head where they're protected by the thick, hard bones of his skull. That way he can keep his eyeballs up on top where he needs them or pull them inside and protect them. Another adaptation has to do with his ears. Now you guys have all gone swimming. Did you ever get water in your ears? You know how when you get water in your ears? Can't hear very well. Feels weird. Gotta get the water back out. So, what do you do? You do the getting the water out of your ears dance. You jump up and down on one foot, shake your head really hard, and bang on the side of your head with your fist. Basically, you look ridiculous. But that's the way you get the water out of your ears. Have you ever seen a crocodile or an alligator doing the getting the water out of your ears dance? No, it's not because they're bad dancers. It's because they don't get water in their ears. Now I know some of you are sitting out there saying, man, I don't see any ears. Well, you can't get water in something you don't have. That's true, but he does have ears. They're just hidden. I'm going to show you one of his ears. It's going to be out on the end of this finger. Watch my finger. See that hole in his head underneath my finger? That's his ear. It's covered over with a big, thick, heavy flap of skin that's waving at you right now. You can wave back if you want to. When he goes underwater, flap of skin closes up the ear hole and the water can go in. Comes out of the water, flap of skin opens up, he can hear just fine. That way he never has to worry about ear aches or ear infections or having to do the getting the water out of your ears dance. And I think y'all agree, those are good adaptations to have if you're going to live in, under, and around the water. She's 12, 
12 equals 12. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is the scary part about the math test, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, why they got rid of that FCAT math. Woo! Anyway, all right, you're 12, she's 12, you're both 12. All right, now, if you're the same age, you think you'll be about the same size. No? You think you'll be bigger than Jesse? Oh, do you 12-year-olds not get very much food? That's kind of sad. Okay. Well, let's get Jesse out and we'll compare. We'll see who's bigger, 12-year-old kids or 12-year-old pythons. Jessie is a Burmese python, but she's an albino Burmese python. If she was a normal Burmese, she'd be brown. Her markings would be black or white, yellow or gold, and her eyes would be orange. Instead, as an albino, she's white, has yellow markings, and has pink eyes. Any kind of animal can be an albino just means you have no dark colors and you always have pink eyes. Some albinos are all white, some are white with light colors like Jesse, some don't even have white, they just have all light colors, but they always have pink eyes. Now think about something. If you look around outside out here, other than birds, you don't ever see adult albino animals in the wild, do you? Nope, there's a couple of good reasons for that. Let's say Jesse was born over in India, out in the wild, as a baby albino python. As soon as she's born, she has got two big problems. One is, she's a hunter. She has to be able to sneak up on animals, catch them and kill them and eat them. When you're shiny white and yellow, you can't sneak up on anybody. She's not going to catch much food. She could starve to death. Problem number two is even worse. Every predator there is eats baby snakes. And when you're shiny white and yellow, you can't hide. Well, guess what? Her worst predators are birds. Who has the best eyesight of every animal on earth? <gasps> that would be birds. So she's going to be killed and eaten long before she'd starved to death. Now, this is true for albinos pretty much around the world, except in one place. There's one place where albinos do very well. Can you guess where that is? Where do you think? Where? I can't hear. You know what it sounds like you're saying to me? Denver. I don't think it's Denver. It's the Arctic! You know why? Because in the Arctic, they have snow on the ground year round, even in the summer sometimes. As a result, if you're white or light colored or an albino, that's good camouflage, good protective coloration. That's why we have polar bears there, white wolves, white foxes, white rabbits, snowy owls. Do you think an albino like Jesse would do well in the Arctic? No. Those other animals all have nice warm fur coats or nice warm coats of feathers. Poor old Jessie doesn't have either one. She would freeze solid and be a giant snake sickle. So that's not gonna work for her. Now she is a Burmese python, 
They are a giant snake. She could grow to be over 25 feet long, which is huge, but not the longest snake in the world. The longest snake is her cousin, the reticulated python. They can grow to be over 32 feet long. That makes them, number one, the longest snakes in the world. Now I'm gonna get Jessie all the way out so you can see just how big she is. hunting for? Food? No. She's looking for her library card! She knows we have a long drive home and she gets really bored. So, she likes to read. Okay. Well, if we can't find her library card, can we get a new one for her? Is that okay? Okay, good. I'd hate to have her get too bored. You never know what she'll do. <laughs> One thing she doesn't do is help drive. All right, come here, you. Okay, it's time to say goodbye to Jesse. Bye, everybody. Have a great day and a great summer vacation. Now, as I said at the beginning, we're going to take just one or two minutes for questions. Not a big, long time. Okay, but before we do that, I want to say one last thing. If I don't have a chance to answer your question, or you think of a question after I've left, where could you find the answer? The library. Have you looked around over there? There are like a gazillion books in that place. And they have books on everything. You have a question, the library has the answer. Now, I know some of you are sitting there saying, but if there's a gazillion books, how do I find the one I need? You don't know how to find your book, guess who knows where all the books are? Librarians do! Let's have a big hand for the librarians! They do a super job! Don't be afraid to ask the librarians for help. They want to help you. Why they became librarians? Otherwise they'd all be NASCAR drivers! It's way more exciting and it does pay a little bit better. So, use your library, use your librarians, keep on reading and always have fun with books. Now, we'll take a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, we'll see if I can hear if somebody asks a question. If not, then we may end up just having people come up to the front, okay? First of all, does anybody have a question? Oh, you have a question? What's your question? Be really loud. Are all African snakes poisonous? No. Okay, good question. Yes? How much does the crocodile weigh? Well, this is not a big, huge, giant crocodile. This is actually a West African dwarf crocodile. They're the smallest crocodile in the world. It weighs probably about, oh, maybe 45 or 50 pounds. Okay? It's also not a baby, it's 22 years old. She's had babies three times, and she is the nastiest animal I have. Oh, we'll get a mom question. Um, what happened to the crocodile's tail? What happened to the crocodile's tail? 
Well, I had to get up really early today and I forgot to put the tail on. I'm sorry about that. No, that's not right. About five years ago, Crocky started chewing on her own tail. Their mouth is full of bacteria and anything they bite, including themselves, gets infected. Her tail got infected. And the problem is, if you get an infection, you go to the doctor, they give you antibiotics, that kills the bacteria, the infection goes away, you get well. But if you take the crocodile to the vet, give it antibiotics, the antibiotics kills the crocodile before it kills the bacteria. So it doesn't work. You can't cure it with medicine. And the real problem is the infection will kill the crocodile. So what you have to do is remove whatever's infected. We did surgery on Crocky and took off about a foot and a half of her tail under an anesthetic at a vet hospital. Now this was about five years ago. Does it look like her tail is growing back? No, they don't regenerate anything. If they lose it, it's gone. If they lose their foot, it's gone. If they lose their tail, it's gone. If they lose their head, they're probably dead. Very few animals do well if they have their head removed. Yes? Is the crocodile real? Oh, yes. We didn't bring any rubber snakes or uh, plastic alligators or anything like that. Yes? Is Jessie affected by the sun? If she was out in the sun and could not get someplace cooler, yes. She could literally burn up inside. So, reptiles, reptiles have to be able to get where their temperature is comfortable. Okay? Yes. I'm sorry? Are they allowed to feel them? Are you allowed to feel them? No, I'm sorry. Uh, and my insurance doesn't let anybody touch anything. Okay? It'd be fine with me, but we have to go by the rules. Yes. Say that again? That's a really good question. How many different species of boas are there? Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer. Because people, there are a lot, but people don't agree on what is a species and what are two subspecies. And this causes a lot of controversy. And as a result, you'll see a wide variety of numbers okay for different kinds of, of any kind of animal so it, it's it's kind of tough i'm sorry i can't give you a definite there's this many because that would be nice to be able to do okay uh right there in the orange i think it's orange the longest poisonous snake is the king cobra they can be over 16 feet long okay a king cobra will actually, you know how cobras sit up? A king cobra, some of them can sit up five feet off the ground, like that. It's a very exciting moment in your life when they do that the first time. I used to have three 16 foot long king cobras, but that was a long time ago. That was before I was married. Go figure. Yes. How can you tell if the snake is poisonous or not poisonous? Really, truly, the only way you can tell for sure is you go to the library and you get out a book that shows good pictures. And I'll tell you, drawings are usually better pictures than photographs. And look at it and learn what it looks like. There is the only thing all the poisonous snakes have that none of the harmless snakes have is poison and fangs. You don't want to go open their mouth to see if they have fangs, do you? Yeah. Because what if you open up a rattlesnake's mouth and you go, uh-oh, you're in big trouble then. So, go to the library, check out a book. They have terrific books with great pictures of animals there and learn what they look like. In this part of Florida, there's four poisonous snakes. Pygmy rattlesnake, diamondback rattlesnake, water moccasin, or cottonmouth, that's two names for the same snake, or the coral snake. You get up into northern Florida, you add two more. The canebrake rattlesnake and the copperhead. Yes? How 
Why didn't the crocodile move? He moved, she moved, I should say, it's a female. She moved when I got her out. But the whole time I'm holding her, you know what she's trying to do? She's trying to push her head back and bite my face. Really? Really. And I'm holding on to her like this around the top of her neck. I'm not squeezing her throat. I'm holding her down because she's pushing up trying to go, ah! And you know what, if I do that in one show, they're gonna want it in every show, and I'm just not gonna get chewed on in every show. Forget it. <laughs> Yellow shirt. No. First of all, snakes only eat animals. You can't give them hot dogs or dog food or chicken McNuggets. However, the animals don't have to be alive. I buy all my rats, mice, and rabbits frozen. It takes about eight hours to thaw out a rabbit, just like your turkey at Thanksgiving, okay? Now, Jessie eats once a month. She'll eat six rabbits for one meal. The rabbits are about this long and about that fat. Okay, they're big rabbits, all right? But they're all, you know, they've been dead for weeks. She still grabs it, constricts it, kills it, even though it's been dead forever, okay? And then she eats them. All right, so if you're going to have a pet snake, you are going to have to feed it animals. They do not have to be live animals. But some people don't want to go out and buy mice or rats or rabbits, you know. You know, they're not perfect pets for everybody by far. Okay. Right there with your hat on backwards. Yeah, either that or your head is. I hope it's your hat. What's that? Jesse is about 160 pounds. Yeah. I had one little boy one time go, wow, that's more than my mom. So, well, family secrets out now. <laughs> yes. Do I feed the animals before the show? Uh, not usually right before the show. Now, some of the animals, like the pancake tortoise, he eats fruits and vegetables. He eats every day, all right? So, but I'll feed her, it's actually a girl, I should say. I'll feed her when I get home tonight. Have any what? Yes! Actually, the question was, does Jessie have bones? They are vertebrates. She has a backbone like you. She, you have ribs, right? She has ribs. She has a skull. She has a neck. She has bones in her tail. Just like if you have a dog, your dog has bones in its tail. Okay? So, yep, she has bones. Yes. The crocodile was about four and a half feet long. But then we took off part of her tail. Now she's more like three and a half feet. Between three and a half and four feet. Okay, yes. Yes. They actually, there are ribs in a cobra's neck. And what they do is they just go, just like that. Just like if you open an umbrella. You know how the umbrella opens up? That's how the ribs open up their neck. Not, there are other snakes that can do that too. Hognose snakes do that. Okay, and there's a few others, but the cobra does it the best. It really opens up. Okay? Um, I see a... I can't tell, it's blue or black shirt, dark color. Yes. Okay, what are they? Gazillions. Jesse's birthday is actually August 25th. Yep. And we, knew that, we know that because I know the girl that hatched her out of the egg. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. How long is Jesse? 
Right now, she's about 16 feet long. And they never, ever stop growing until they die. They grow for their whole life. Okay? In captivity, the big pythons like Jesse can live about 30 years. The oldest one I know of for sure was 27 years. Okay, but they say they can live up to about 30. Now, in the wild, it's more like 15 to 20. Life's a lot harder out in the wild, so, yes. She, if she got to be over 25 feet long, she'd weigh over 300 pounds. They can get very big, very fat, very heavy. Yes. We actually, we don't have an attraction, okay? What we have is a big addition built on our house and all the animals are in cages or tanks in the addition. None of them live in the boxes. These are just for going to and from shows.